Given the great news that 11 Bitcoin spot ETFs were finally approved in the US by the SEC on the 10th of January 2024, I thought it would be useful to put together a video looking at these, answering the questions, what is an ETF? What's a Bitcoin spot ETF? What's the difference between a Bitcoin spot ETF and a Bitcoin futures ETF? Which companies offer a Bitcoin spot ETF? How can you buy Bitcoin spot ETFs? Can you invest in a Bitcoin spot ETF outside of the United States, in other countries such as the UK, Canada, Australia, or in the EU? Do Bitcoin spot ETFs actually already exist in other countries? And finally, how successful have they been so far and will they be in the future? And I'll be covering Bitcoin spot ETFs in two videos to keep them a bit shorter. So do keep an eye out for part two that will be released in two days time on Saturday, depending on when you're watching this, of course. So please do like this video and subscribe to the channel so I can continue to offer more content for you in future. And let's jump straight in and take a look at Bitcoin spot ETFs. To begin with, what is an ETF? Well, an ETF is an exchange traded fund, which is basically a pool of securities that will track the price of an index, sector, commodity, stocks, bonds, other assets, etc. So they offer a way to invest in a wide range of, let's say bonds or shares in one package, rather than having to do this individually. And ETFs can be bought or sold on a stock exchange unlike a mutual fund, for example, hence the name exchange traded fund. And that means you can buy or sell them at any time during the day, rather than just once per day, which normally happens with other funds. The first ETF was the SPDR S&P 500 ETF, which obviously tracks the S&P 500 index that was created in 1993 in the US, which you can see the growth of here from 1993 to 2024. So having looked at what an ETF is, what is a Bitcoin spot ETF? Well, a Bitcoin spot ETF gives traditional investors the opportunity to invest in Bitcoin and use a regulated financial instrument without having to buy the Bitcoin themselves. So for those who would never otherwise purchase their own Bitcoin, cold storage, hardware wallet, securing their private keys themselves, etc. When you invest in a Bitcoin ETF, you're not directly buying Bitcoin itself. You're buying shares in a fund that holds Bitcoin. The Bitcoin spot ETF purchases Bitcoin directly. The ETF then issues shares relating to the number of Bitcoin it holds that investors can trade or buy and sell publicly on traditional stock exchanges. And spot Bitcoin ETFs don't pay dividends because the Bitcoin doesn't produce any income. The Bitcoins are apparently held in a secure digital vault or wallet, which registered custodians manage. And this includes cold storage with eight of the 11 Bitcoin spot ETFs actually using Coinbase as their custodian for their Bitcoin, which we'll see again in part two. The value of a Bitcoin ETF's shares should reflect Bitcoin's market price. And to ensure this, the ETF can buy and sell Bitcoin to balance the supply and demand. So if the ETF's price starts to differ from the price of Bitcoin, then they basically step in to restore its value with this rebalancing actually done by others rather than the ETF itself. So the investor could profit from Bitcoin's gains without owning Bitcoin themselves and going through all of the processes involved to do so. And if you've bought any Bitcoin or any cryptocurrency for that matter on an exchange, you may have seen the spot price, which is the current market price of Bitcoin, hence the name spot ETF. So we've looked at what an ETF and then a Bitcoin spot ETF are, but what is a Bitcoin futures ETF in comparison? As we saw at the beginning of this video, the Bitcoin spot ETF was approved on the 10th of January, 2024. However, the Bitcoin futures ETF was actually approved back in 2021. And the main difference between them 
is the underlying assets they invest in because a Bitcoin futures ETF invests in futures contracts. So it's looking at the expected future price of Bitcoin and involves speculating on the future price of it without actually holding any Bitcoin. The investor in the futures ETF simply buys shares in that exchange traded fund or ETF rather than having to invest in futures contracts themselves while the fund owns Bitcoin futures contracts that are an agreement where you'll buy or sell Bitcoin at a specified price on a future date. So put simply the difference between a spot and futures Bitcoin ETF is investing in the potential future price of Bitcoin versus shares of a fund that derives its price from the current price of Bitcoin. And this is why there was much more excitement surrounding the Bitcoin spot ETF, because there's more exposure to Bitcoin itself as it involved a fund holding it rather than just speculating on its future price. And that leads on quite nicely to the advantages of Bitcoin spot ETFs. Firstly, the increase of institutional adoption as it will attract a wider range of investors and therefore more liquidity into Bitcoin, which could lead to much larger adoption of Bitcoin as an investment asset and therefore lead to a large price increase over time. Remember, as a scarce asset with only 21 million Bitcoin. This could also decrease the volatility seen in the Bitcoin market. The Bitcoin spot ETFs could also lead to more trading volume of Bitcoin by hedge funds, day traders, etc. It's legitimizing the cryptocurrency industry through these regulated financial instruments, making it more of an investment vehicle, which could again lead to more adoption and even user friendliness over time for the crypto industry. I have mentioned this already, but for people who have money, but little knowledge or desire to buy Bitcoin themselves, an ETF makes the process much more convenient and easier for them, which essentially lowers barriers for entry into the crypto market. Bitcoin spot ETFs might also provide a good way for large investors to diversify their portfolios. And finally, this could pave the way for other spot ETFs in the crypto industry, such as Ethereum, for example, which is already being talked about quite heavily. However, there are some possible disadvantages of Bitcoin spot ETFs. For example, there are still fees involved such as management fees and brokerage commissions. Although investors wouldn't have exchange fees or other fees associated with buying Bitcoin directly, they also wouldn't need to spend the time involved in doing this either. Bitcoin spot ETFs could be more expensive to invest in than other funds or ETFs because of the costs needed to secure and trade Bitcoin that the funds need to pay for. Another potential risk here for a traditional investor would be the volatility of Bitcoin's price, which they probably wouldn't be used to. There could be tracking error also, which is where there could be a difference between the Bitcoin spot ETF's performance and the actual market price of Bitcoin, which could annoy investors if they wanted to buy or sell and the price wasn't reflected accurately. Next is given that eight of the 11 Bitcoin spot ETFs have used Coinbase as their Bitcoin custodian, there is a concentration of risk here. So if anything happens to Coinbase, not that there's likely to be, but it does make it somewhat of a target for hackers. And if there is, then there would be a large fallout and impact given the large amount of Bitcoin stored by it. Also, a lack of consistent, clear regulation may detract investors from investing in a Bitcoin spot ETF until this is improved in future and things have settled down a bit because things could change quite quickly if regulation and laws are changed or brought in. For example, changes in crypto tax laws could make crypto less attractive because the regulatory environment in a lot of countries is still hostile towards crypto. And the big disadvantage, obviously coming from someone who's in the crypto space and who set up a YouTube channel about it, is that investors wouldn't actually hold the Bitcoin themselves. And it's supposed to be something that anyone around the world can invest in and benefit from. And a way of getting away from the traditional financial system 
rather than supporting large institutional investors and companies that we'll see more of in part two. But I believe the balance has to be made between this and potentially larger financial gains in future. So that ends this video looking at and introducing Bitcoin spot ETFs. But as always, I'd love to know what you think in the comments below. And just a reminder, that part two will be released in two days time on Saturday, depending on when you're watching this, of course. And in part two, I cover which companies offer a Bitcoin spot ETF, how you can buy Bitcoin spot ETFs, which countries you can invest in a Bitcoin spot ETF from and how successful have they been so far and will they be in future? And if you're interested in more of a tailored approach to your general crypto education and you think you'd benefit from having someone look over your shoulder and guide you on your journey, I do offer one-to-one -one coaching to those who have the desire and the means to educate themselves further. And there are links in the description where you can message me and book in a free video call to see if we'd be a good fit. And if you found this content interesting, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel as it really does help. And have a great day.